Good evening, YouTube. Just got home from work and uh, the shop's all cleaned up. The mezzanine's finished. So, without further ado, I think we're ready to start back on the power wagon again. Here it is in all of its glory. 1947 Dodge Power Wagon. I bought it up in northern Ohio. Um, it had a dump bed on it. I took that off. Uh, I have since purchased a bed. The bed's a little bit of the wrong length, so I'm going to have to shorten it but it'll be fine you won't even notice it's different once i get it together so yeah the engine and trans is already out of it i took that out last year and then i kind of threw it all back together just to get it out of the building um, but now we're ready to disassemble it for real and uh yeah it's got a lot of random holes in the firewall that i'm gonna have to repair um i mean the sheet metal's not terrible uh, it could be worse at 77 years old. I do have the center hump for it. Uh, somebody cut the seat frame all off and put these stupid seat sliders in at some point in its life. I'm going to say it had a 70s restore probably uh, just by looking at some of the things that were done. I do have to fix all of the uh, cab mount areas. Um, yeah, I'll send the gas tank out. I'll get that cleaned and uh, checked. The leaf springs are all shot, every one of them. So these leaf springs are really expensive for what they are. So I think what I'm going to do is adapt different leaf springs onto it. Make it ride a little better for one. And for two, it just makes a lot more sense. I can get those for a fourth of the price versus, you know, by the time you buy all the pins, bushings, all new leafs and everything you're going to be in at three thousand dollars just to put leaf springs on it i think i can do it for less than a thousand bucks um i do have a brand new windshield for it up on the mezzanine in a box i've got the emblems were missing when i bought it but i have since sourced some emblems for it this emblem was on it when i bought it the dodge emblem it's got the factory winch uh pto driven winch now the engine there before it's over here i have it kind of dismantled Going to do a full rebuild on that and uh, go through the transmission, check it out. Somebody welded the PTO shaft onto the PTO, so I'm going to have to cut that off and probably put the shaft in the lathe and machine that all to get it back true again. But, uh, yeah, I think we're ready to start dismantling this thing. I want to get it down to a bare frame at least by next week so I can get the frame into work and get it sandblasted and uh, we can start the repairs on the frame and uh, get our axles redone and checked and uh, we can start putting the suspension back together so uh, I'm gonna put you on a tripod here and uh, we'll start tearing some parts off this thing be right back alright let's start tearing some parts off this thing we'll start with this hood first it's kinda hard to get off there by yourself um, but it's doable. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. Let's set it down first so we don't smash our hands. Kind of just take it right off the front. Without too much problem. I'll probably end up putting all these pieces up on the mezzanine until we're ready to start working on each individual part because uh, yeah, they'll be in the way down here for sure. All right, need some sockets and wrenches and Grab us some tools here real quick. Hopefully you guys like this project as we go along with it. Uh, it's going to take us a while, that's for sure. There's going to be quite a few videos about it. And uh, I just want to try to make sure it's as right as possible, that's all. It's not going to be 100% period correct because that would cost a lot of money. At the end of the day, 
I really just want a driver. I want to I want to use this thing. I want to play with it. I want to take it out in the woods. I want to pull trees out with it. I want to I want to do stuff that it was built to do back in the day. And uh, so it don't have to be perfect. I, I don't want something so perfect if I put a scratch on it, I'll be sick. I, I really want to play with it. I've wanted one of these for a long time and I want to build it how I want to build it, but I don't want to chop it up. I don't want to put a Cummins diesel in it. I don't want to put some V8 engine in it. I don't want to screw it all up. Change, I don't want to change the axles. I don't. I want to keep it as close to original as possible, but yet it still be a good driver. That's my thing. Take these two core support support rods off of here. I assume that's what you call them anyway. I don't. I'm not sure what they're really called. Most of the vehicles I've worked on in my life have been 70s or above, so it'll be a little bit of a learning curve. Things were done a little differently back in the day. So, but we'll figure it out one piece at a time. Let's see. Seven sixteenths. I'll take these some bolts out of the fenders that I I threw these bolts in there just to get it together so I could get it out of my shop. We do a Halloween party every year, on, and uh, we set a haunted house up in here. So <laughs> about a week before the party, it was all blew apart in pieces. There was parts everywhere in this building, so I had to hurry up and throw it together. So I can get it out of here. And since it was out of here, we had it all decorated for Halloween. And I got some pictures of that. Let's see if I can't figure out how to insert them into the video so you can see it. It actually looked pretty neat. Um, it was all lit up red. And we had a skeleton in the front seat. And it was pretty cool. Next trick, remember what I did here. I got a bunch of bolts in it, that's for sure. That one there's a 5 16 bolt. I'll have to go get a half inch for it. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna need a 5 8 right there. I need a half and a 5 8 Bear with me, I'm new to this videoing thing, so they'll get better as we go and I learn and um, it'll just take, take a little bit of time. Grab my ratchet here. None of this stuff's really too tight. Like I said, I just threw it together, so. All the metal on this truck's real heavy compared to anything nowadays. That's probably why it's still around 76 years later. And not completely rotted out. I'm gonna assume it lived most, lived most of its life in Ohio. At least from like 95, I believe, when that guy purchased it. I'm not sure before that, but I'm assuming that it probably has been in Ohio most of its life. That bolt's hard to get out since the core support mount's kind of low. It's missing the fabric spacer that goes in it.
Yeah, be about out of there. Yeah, there it is. All windy. Sorry about the bang. I'm sure it's quite loud on the microphone. Got a couple clamps holding the bottom part of the fender to the running board here. There's one fender, the old flat fender. They need some desperate repair. Got a couple five sixteenths bolts in there. Take out what would be the inner fender, I guess. I'm going to try to keep this shop cleaned up and uh, keep this as organized as possible. Um, I'm kind of messy when it comes to that stuff because I get sidetracked real easy. I start seeing other things to do and I lose my task and leave my stuff all out. I need to not do that. So We're going to take our time and we'll go through each piece individually. And, uh, Hopefully, we'll get her, and uh, life will be good, right? Let's go pull the other fender off. This little cart's handy. Oh, let's see, 7 sixteenths. I gotta fix all the nuts that are in these fenders. Half of them are stripped out, so we're gonna have to cut some of them off and do some repairs on them. But it's not a big deal. That's the pretty easy part, really. The hard part is remembering how it all goes together. Now there's a nut on the inside of this one because that nut was stripped out. It's all those little tiny things you gotta fix that take forever. I gotta get an 11 16 wrench. Well, we're talking about here, uh, don't forget to. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, tell them to subscribe, share the channel. Uh, the more views we can get, the more subscribers we can get, the quicker this project will get over the, over the hump. We can take it for some drives and tour through the woods and start on our next adventure, whatever that may be when we get to that point. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll find something else cool to work on
see if there's a couple in there. The bolt's just sitting in there. Come on. It wants to. The threads are kind of there and they're not there. I'm about half stripped out. There we go. Fender number two. All right, inner fender. A lot of the bolts in this thing, a lot of the original bolts, I should say, are fine thread. I don't know if that was a normal thing back in the day or not, but there's the driver's side inner fender. It's got that little spot right here for the battery box. A lot of your half-ton pickups and stuff, the battery was under the floor, but in the power wagons, it was out here because there's no room under the floor from all the drive line underneath there. All right, what's next? Go ahead and get the grill off of it, I guess. Grab a five eighths here, an eleven sixteenths wrench. Get these nuts off and these bolts out of here and lift this up off there. Here one. It's crazy how simple things were back then. It, it's it's mesmerizing actually. It's wild to see. You can literally put the whole drivetrain in the frame of this thing. Uh, I mean, brakes and all, with pedals and everything. Steering column, whole nine yards. You could seriously throw a seat on it and drive the frame around. But you can put all that together, get your brakes bled, get everything hooked up, test fire and everything before you put the cab on it. And you can lower the cab right over top of everything. It's wild. How simple. All right, well that didn't take very long. Pick my tools up, put them on my cart. Need to get those off of there. I don't remember what that is. I'm thinking it's a seven eighths, but it could be wrong. If I recall though, it's a 7 8 inch. Yep. These rods are kind of neat. You can adjust these to change the angle of the front so you can get all your body lines and stuff lined up. One of them's bent. I think I just kind of straightened it, but I gotta mess with it a little more.
that one over there was the real bent one. You can tell because the nut kind of came off hard. I straightened it before I put it back on. But like I said, I need to work on that a little more, I think. All right, the front end is off. I think tomorrow, I don't have much time at nights because I got to go back to work early in the morning, but tomorrow I think we'll pull the running boards and uh, get the gantry crane over here, lift the cab up, get it off there. I need to get some more of them wooden dollies so I can set it on something and push to move it around. Um, yeah. And we gotta get this front bumper off and the winch out of it and yeah a lot of stuff so all right well don't forget to comment uh don't forget to subscribe and like follow all that stuff tell everybody and uh we're gonna keep moving right along on this power wagon there's gonna be a couple other things I, my wife wanted some new powered step bars for her jeep gladiator so those are supposed to be in tomorrow um, we'll probably get to those this weekend. We'll put some new step bars on our Jeep for her, and uh, I'll video that and uh, let you guys follow along. And uh, yeah, I'm excited getting back to it. All right, we'll catch you guys later. Peace.